So we've gotten to, as I said, an important point in the idea of uh, ordinals. Epsilon naught, it's called, it's called the first of the epsilon numbers. It's the limit of this tower of exponentials of omega. We start out with the first limit ordinal, the smallest kind of infinity, and we do this process of um, repeated exponenti exponentiation, and we look at the limit. Another way to say it is that um, it's the smallest number, the x epsilon naught is the smallest number that if I take omega to it, usually that produces something much, much, much bigger in a way, or at least a, a new order of infinity. So omega is big, but omega to the omega is really big, and certainly if we use that as an index for fast-growing functions, it's hugely bigger. It, that's what started to swamp the Conway chain error notation. Um, and then omega to that is even bigger and produces faster growing functions. The thing about epsilon naught is it's kind of the end of the line for that because it's the first number that if you take omega to it, to it it's itself. Because if I think of this as an infinitely long chain of omegas, it doesn't matter if I put an omega in, in, at the bottom. It's like when I had the stars and I had an infinitely many stars and I just put one star at the bottom. It doesn't really do anything. So this is a very important property. It's, uh, it's the first fixed point of the omega to the x function. And there's a lot of stuff in ordinal theory about fixed points and functions, things like that, most of which I don't know. Um, and so it has a really, really special role. Well, it also has a special role because of its relation with, with proof theory. But let me mention that just in a second. Let me just show you just the absolute first part of one of these massive expansions. I won't subject you to the, the whole thing again. Well, it's not the, it wasn't the whole thing even before. But just the first part of, let's say, f epsilon naught of 3, because the way epsilon naught is defined, it's the limit of this chain of exponentials. So it just turns into a chain, a 3 chain of exponentials. This is actually omega double up 3, if you like, with the Knuth notation. And then you put 3 into it. OK, that's a limit ordinal as well. And you do it by just attacking this top part. You say, OK, omega to the omega is the limit of omega to the n's. And I just put in the 3 diagonalizing. And then omega cubed, that's a limit of stuff. It turns out if you unpack it, you get something like omega squared times 2 plus omega 2 times 3 plus 3. It's kind of like uh, base notation. If this is like 10 to the 3, then it'd be like 1 less than that sort of is 999. It's got a little bit like that. Then you can start unpacking that and unpacking and unpacking. But notice what we've got. At the very least, we've got an omega to the omega squared still and much more. And the biggest we got even before was omega to the omega. And I was showing you how unbelievably huge that expansion does. It, it's the thing that, that completely beats the Conway chain error notation finally, just, just for, for, for good. And now we're going beyond that. We're going omega to omega cubed. It's just scary, scary, scary big. Okay, And so if we put in 4 or 5 or 6 or 7, this tower it would get bigger. It would be, it's just hard to fathom just how incredibly big this function be, becomes. So f sub epsilon naught is um, not, to be honest, not a bad place to stop the madness, to stop this ridiculous idea of going on. Now, you don't have to stop. You can always just do f sub epsilon naught plus 1. And that's going to iterate this process. And it totally makes sense. And then you can keep going. And in another video, I will. For the hardcore people, I probably will keep going with these videos. I'm not sure how many people are going to watch all of them. Um, but I've had fun thinking about these. And believe it or not, it actually has connections to real other parts of mathematics. But f epsilon naught is actually not a bad place to stop just because it's so huge. And we've already really got the idea of this of recursion and diagonalization and everything. And because it completely beats Conway chained arrows. Um, it's actually very, very important in proof theory. Okay, So I want to mention Peano arithmetic. This is kind of the, the uh, most, I don't know how to describe it, the most popular stripped down system of mathematics. Um, and it's utterly based on the idea of ordinary induction, proofs by induction. And this, of course, completely tied in with the idea of recursion. And our, the ordinary idea of a proof by induction. So piano arithmetic basically is what you can do if you start with the successor function. You use recursive definitions to define 
um, multiplication, exponentiation, all that kind of stuff. And then you ask questions about the mathematics you create through that, and you allow yourself the technique of standard proof by mathematical induction. And the question is, what can you do with that? What can you create with it? And what can you prove? What can you prove true or false? And there's this very, very famous result of Gödel. I guess I want to make that correct. Let's put a diacritical on that. Can I do that? It's not going to let me do that. Um, there we go. Kurt Gödel. He proved that any math in any mathematical system, in any even sort of minimally powerful mathematical system, there are true but unprovable results. Another way to say it is there are results that you can't prove true or false. You can't find a proof and you can't find a disproof. And it doesn't matter even if you make your system more powerful, it'll still there'll still be maybe more obscure results, but there'll still be results that are you can't fig prove the truth or falsity of. And one way to say it is you can actually there's a good way to think of it in which they really are true, but they're unprovable in the system. This is a very deep subject, Gödel's incompleteness theorem. That's what that goes by. Um, I'm not going to say much more about the theory of that. But it does. Add, it, the the problem with Gödel's proof is it constructs. It's it shows that there are these results that are true but unprovable. But they're extremely arbitrary and they're done in a very very tricky tricky fashion. Now it turns out that one of the absolute basics of the trick is diagonalization in a very very clever way. So in fact, diagonalization, which started with Cantor, and we've seen as a method of creating ridiculously huge functions. Um, it goes into the girdle proof big time, okay? But it begs the question of some sort of more natural or pre-existing result that is unprovable. So can we come up with some sort of statement that is of some interest, and we might be interested in it in itself, and it's somewhat natural and not incredibly convoluted a state, that is actually, we can show that can't be proved in a certain mathematical system. And the natural place to look turns out to be, there's, you can do this for lots of systems, any system is what Gödel says. Piano arithmetic is kind of the preeminent example of that minimally powerful mathematical system. It's not incredibly complicated. It's, it's a very stripped down version of mathematics. It's still pretty powerful. You can prove most of mathematics that most people care about. Um, but um, it's a great sort of test case for what can you prove, what can you not prove. Okay, so we'd like to find some result that's true but unprovable in, with the te techniques of piano arithmetic. In other words, using ordinary induction. Um, well, and that's, it turns out that has to do with F epsilon naught. Here's what we can prove. Well, not we, not me, that's for sure. I'm not an expert in this. You can prove that piano arithmetic cannot deal with functions that grow as fast or faster than, as fast as, or God forbid, faster than this function, this very function that we finally got into f epsilon naught. It turns out that is not only kind of the, the label of the function is not only a natural end of the line for this kind of working with ordinals, and there's a lot more to do with ordinals, trust me, but this is the, the end of sort of the basics of ordinal arithmetic the function that we can create using that label and this the the tricks of recursion and repetition and diagonalization this function f epsilon naught is a function that piano arithmetic can't deal with and so deal with that's uh, purposely vague but what it really means is that you can't even prove that this function actually really can be evaluated using techniques of piano arithmetic notice remember what this looked like you start expanding this out and expanding it out and kind of going deeper and deeper into the recursion. And I showed you in the previous video, you know, this whole pages of um, expansions of these guys. Well, how do we actually know this is ever even going to stop? How do we know that the dot, dot, dots don't just getting, keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you can actually never get to the bottom of things? Well, piano arithmetic can't actually prove that. It, can't, it doesn't really know. You have to have some somewhat more 
um, sophisticated technique than prion arithmetic to deal with this kind of function. All the other ones that we've defined, even like um, f sub omega to the hundred of a thousand, that number can be dealt with with prion arithmetic, but this function cannot be. And so there's something very deep about this function that it's actually transcended the limits of sort of the most natural basic system of mathematics and this incredibly important technique of proof mathematical induction okay so all we have to do so what we've reduced our problem to of finding an unprovable statement is find um, a natural place where a function of this growth rate occurs and it's gonna be still a little bit um, weird but in case you were worried about I don't like using infinities to describe big finite numbers it turns out that there is a place where we don't really have to talk about ordinals although it's useful but we don't have to talk about ordinals and we can create a function with this roughly this fantastic growth rate and it's big enough so that we could find this result that's true but not uh, not provable in piano arithmetic